So, shall we continue with a, a little bit more on Watson? Yeah. Okay. All right, so Jennifer and Linda are gonna help me talk about Watson, and uh, I think we'll start by uh, testing your skills against Watson. And so, you know, as I said, James did a great job of describing how we're trying to understand how the brain works. When we built Watson, uh, it's important to understand a little bit about that, but we came more of the approach of Given that we're building a computer system, what technique can you put into a computer that would allow it to answer questions and behave like a human? Not necessarily do it in the same way, but sort of look like the way a human does it. And uh, it's interesting to make these comparisons because your human brain, uh, I think it, uh, as we like to say, it can fit in a shoebox. It's powered by a tuna fish sandwich. I think it runs on how many watts? Something 8, 10, 10 watts, 15 watts. So you know a watt is a measure of, of electricity, uh, a measure of power. And uh, the computer that we built to actually run the Watson software requires 80,000 watts. So that's uh, what, 8,000 8, times more power than the brain requires. So uh, we had to use a lot of energy to build a computer that could uh, think the way a brain does. So now in this room we've got uh, a couple hundred brains that are extremely powerful. We'll collectively test your ability to uh, compete against Watson in answering some real Jeopardy questions here. So the category is scrambled state capitals. And here's your first clue, Oak Pet. Topeka, you got it very quickly. So the human brain scores a point there. Watson? What is Topeka? Watson got it as well. Topeka, so we can see Watson's top three answers here. That, that bar is Watson's confidence, and Watson was 98% confident in Topeka. Another scrambled state capital, rib smack. Bismarck, very quick over here, fantastic. What is Bismarck? Watson got this as well, Bismarck. Tectonics, here's your clue. On January 27, 2010, this CEO announced his company's latest creation, the iPad. Steve Jobs. You guys are pretty Who smart. Who is Steve Jobs? Watson gets this one as well. Watson also considered Apple as a possible answer, but the question was asking not for the company, but for the CEO. And so to get the specific answer, we've got to understand the question, the words in the question. Who's your daddy company is the next category. Get ready. Sierra Mist and Doritos Chips. Frito-Lay. Frito-Lay. <clears throat> Pepsi. There we go. Watson. What is PepsiCo? PepsiCo is the correct answer. I think Pepsi bought Frito-Lay so I can understand your mistake. A human mistake. A computer would never make that mistake, of course. <laughs> uh, I got a couple more for you. Countries ending in E. So it's going to test your geography. It's found in Central America. Somebody's seen this already. That was a very quick answer. What is Belize? Amazing. The human brains are uh, really coming on strong here. Last one. Eleven letter words. Unplanned or without premeditation like some combustion. Spontaneous. spontaneous. Watson? What is spontaneous? Spontaneous. So you guys are sort of matching Watson step for step here. Let me give you one more clue that I think is kind of interesting. From the category Lincoln Blogs, and so now I've already given you a little hint here because you can see a picture of Abraham Lincoln. The clue is Treasury Secretary Chase just submitted this to me for the third time. Guess what, pal? This time I'm accepting it. Anyone? Guesses? Resignation. What is his resignation? That is, in fact, the correct answer. And now this clue is a little bit tricky because... Um, the words in the clue don't necessarily give you a lot of information about what it might be. You know it's something that's submitted or accepted. You've got a secretary and a president. Maybe they'll submit a bill or a speech. Most likely the resignation because we're all a little bit cynical about politics. Um, and maybe if you're you know, older and cynical. But otherwise, if you don't know the specifics of the history, you know, how are you going to come up with a guess? So I was uh, talking to some other students in middle school about this, and one girl raised her hand, and her answer was, what is a friend request? <laughs> and so now, uh, all of you younger guys don't think that's funny. I mean, that seems like an obvious answer. If you're, if you're a little bit older and you've been around uh, you know, before the internet existed and Facebook, if you imagine, did Facebook even exist back in the 1860s? Not really, so that's uh, you know, not a very likely answer. But what's interesting is that when you see the word submitted and accepted, you probably connect it with a friend request and Facebook. And so the meaning of language is very contextual and 
how you interpret it is based on your experience and your background. And so this clue is kind of interesting in that it really speaks to how the human brain works to understand language and really some of the challenges of building a computer system that can understand language with that same level of uh, accuracy. So now, as scientists to build a system that could actually compete on Jeopardy, one of the first things we have to do is be able to measure the performance, because we want to be able to run experiments, and we have to know how well we're doing. We also want to measure human performance, and so we did that with something we call the winner's cloud here. So you all guys are interested in science, you should be familiar with charts and graphs. Here we have a, a graph that plots human performance, and each dot shows how well a human uh, champion on Jeopardy performed. So they played a game of Jeopardy and they won. And on the x-axis, we're showing within that game what percentage of the questions they attempted to answer. And on the y-axis, how many they got correct. So the average Jeopardy champion, I don't know, we've got several hundred, maybe a thousand dots up there. Average Jeopardy champion answers about 50% of the questions. They get 90% of them correct. So they're actually pretty good at uh, answering questions. When we started this project with our existing question answering technology, we got that brown curve on the bottom there. So that sort of represented the big gap in performance. You know, perfect performance on this would be the upper right corner. We're starting in the lower left corner here with a pretty good uh, computer system that can answer questions. So this is what we had to bridge to build Watson. And uh, it was not easy. And so, you know, there were many challenges along the way. And actually, let me uh, show you a little video that shows uh, early on some of the, the mistakes Watson might have made. In REM's It's the End of the World as We Know It, two of the men with the initials L.B. Watson? What is, I feel fine. Ooh, no. The worst thing is if Watson just crashes in the middle of the game. That's what you don't want. But then the second worst thing is if you have some horrible bug where Watson starts getting everything wrong. What are trousers? No. What is harness racing? No. What is taxi to the dark side? No. What is artificial sweetener? Come on now, no. What is milk? No. Very nice to yeah, We both beat them. Good for you. <laughs> Humans. Humans, so the humans uh, claim to be victorious there. And again, it's part of this challenge of how do we build a computer system that can do something that previously we thought only humans can do. 